What's up, my good people? This your boy CJ Moneyway. Welcome to the Moneyway Show. I'm here with my boy P. Miller today. Hey, uh, tell us about that win, man, that you had on Wheel of Fortune, man. You know, I ain't never seen nobody you know, <laughs> on Wheel of Fortune that I know that went on there and just did what you did, man, because you killed it on there, dog. Right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. No, man, um, and this the whole story, man, it, it go way back. It's crazy how the story even start, man, because, like, everybody that really know me, everybody that's in my circle, they know, like, Will of Fortune is kind of like my, that's my thing. They like, man, this dude crazy at this, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I, I saw them before the letter's up there. I try to guess what it is, you know, before a letter even come up there. So, yeah. so that's how it started, man. So when I, I finally, somebody had to talk me into getting on auditioning for the show because I never even thought about it, man. I even, I, I, ne I just didn't think about it. I didn't think it was a possibility of, you know. So eventually, man, my niece, she talked me into getting on it, man. And uh, once I passed the audition and, and they invited me out there to the show, bro, I was, I was, uh, how can you say, I was kind of like over-prepared, man. It was like, one of them moments, man, that you just waiting for. It was like a layup, man. Oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People like, was you nervous? And I'm like, man, I was. I, I kind of was ready for it, bro. It, was, it sound crazy as hell, man. But like, like I say, the the people that's in my circle, they know. They like when they find out, they were like, oh. And I pretty yeah. much did did what I what what they expected me to do, I guess. Hey, so uh, you say audition. So what did you have to do for the audition? Like, how do that process go? Uh okay, since uh, I guess since COVID they do it differently now. They uh what they do is uh it's a Zoom call, you know what I'm saying? And it's I think it's three people. So it's the producer of the show, uh one of the producers of the show, three people, three contestants, and uh all on the Zoom call. And what they do is they do a toss up. So they'll have a screen with a puzzle on the screen and each letter will pair up a little one by one. And the first person to say their name solves a puzzle or whatever. So we had to do that. And we had to do an individual test. Where they gave us like 16 puzzles. We had to try to figure them out. It was like just puzzles with like a few letters in it. So we had to try to figure them out. So it was, it was I mean, audition was kind of tough, man, because the crazy thing about it, I don't know why, but I didn't even have my phone, my Wi-Fi hooked up. You know what I'm saying? I had my Wi-Fi off. And I'm wondering, like, man, what's going on? So for like the first ten minutes, man, I was struggling for the audition, but I still ended up winning the uh, the little competition with the other three guys. Okay, the yeah, other two guys. Yeah, that was cool, man. When you sent me the link, and I checked it out, man, I see how you just smoked everybody. Then you got the last, you know, the last one. So uh, tell us about that trip you won, man. You know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let everybody get into your pockets on how much you actually <laughs> won. Make them go to YouTube and go see the show. But uh, so, tell us about that trip, man. Oh uh, man, the trip, the trip was all that, man. I ain't gonna lie, the trip. I actually just, just got back from the trip recently, man. Uh, the trip was to Saint Lucia, which okay. is an island in the Caribbean. Beautiful island, man. I mean, uh, it wasn't all inclusive. But they give you a thousand dollars spending money, so you need about that for uh, for all this. I mean, if you want to partake in all the stuff and have some fun and and do all the other things and on the, on the island, man. But I mean, it was it was a well needed vacation, man. I as far you. as the wins, man, you know how it is when you when you when you win some money. As soon as you win the money, everybody you everybody you owe or everybody you <laughs> think you <laughs> you own. It come out the woodworks, man. So <clears throat> I had to deal with that for a little bit, but uh, other than that, the trip was the trip was all that, man. Well, you know, man, that's the price of success. You know what I'm saying? You get a little money, like you say. Everybody want to get in your pockets, you know. So oh, yeah. uh, you know, like I know going back to your background, man. You know, you you's a music guy. You know what I'm saying? So coming up from from the G, from where we came up from, so. Like when you was in music, man. Like what inspired you? You know what I'm saying. Coming up, you know, the, like was it the things that you saw or the things that you actually experienced, or what was it? What drew drove you to the music? Uh, bro, I I think music was 
influence as, a, as an influence at an early age mm -hmm. because I, I can't even remember not liking music. I can't even remember not wanting to, to do some type of form of music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I believe that came from my parents, man. Well, my mama really, man, she 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 played a lot of music. My mom and my, my sister, they played a lot of music, man. So I grew up on all that stuff. And um, it's funny you ask. Cause I gotta, I gotta uh, uh, promote my, my, my joint. Uh, I'm doing a documentary right now. Okay. Um, and it's in the works right now. I'm uh, just finishing up the pilot episode, and um, it stems back from my group in Gary, cause we was one of the most influential groups in Gary at okay. one point in time. It was 1989. The group was called Showtime Posse. And we was winning. I don't know if you remember the Easter talent shows uh, that was West Side every year and uh, the citywide talent show, the Genesis Center. But we was winning all that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I document that. I, I got footage, of, uh, old footage of that. So I document that and just how that music and coming together with those guys and that camaraderie kind of shaped me into the guy that I am today. So uh, this is just basically a, a, a explanation of who I am as a person and, and why, and it all stems from that. So music has been in my life for as, as long as I, I was able to, to, to talk. Hey man, that's what's up though. You know what I'm saying? The grassroots, like you say, uh, coming up and it shaped you into the person that you are now, you know, and I, that's cool, man. Um, when that documentary come out, man, you're going to have to let me know when it dropped, man. You know what I'm saying? For sure, yeah. man. I'm, I, I might try to send you a, uh, I'm gonna try to send you a, a a trailer or something like that. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you know. You know, I promote it, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what we here for. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Money Way Show is all about. Bringing the sure. platform to to people to people like us. You know what I'm saying? That won't get one in any ordinary spot. You know what I'm saying? So this is about us coming up in the G. You know, mm -hmm. Northwest Indiana. Hey, we hey we all we got. <laughs> exactly, man, and and it's strength in numbers, man. So when we all come together and we all work together, imagine how powerful that could be. Hey, that's how it is, you know. But you know how we are, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to see another person have a dollar more yeah. than they got. You know, it, it's hard to get the support out here from. Actually, man, it's it's harder to get the support from the people who you think will support you. You're right. The most. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, the people from your own city. If you're if okay, not not just the city, but the region, the area. You look at a lot of the, the reason that hip hop blew up in New York the way it did is because everybody supported each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it didn't matter if you if it, it didn't matter if, uh, nothing mattered except the fact that oh they from New York, they from the Bronx, they yeah. from they from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They from Harlem. That's how it is. So that's how we gotta be. We gotta be like, oh, they from the G. Oh, they from Delaney. They from Dory Miller. Oh, they yeah. from the Park. They from Phone Nine. They from down here. You gotta. The G is the G, man. It's a small little island, but we all gotta pitch in and support each other. We uh, or, or else it ain't gonna work, man. No, nah, it ain't gonna work. And you know, even with that, you know, what I'm saying, even with that being said, like, it, it comes to a point where everybody want to be the first one to do something. Like, uh, we got Freddie Gibbs, you know, mm -hmm. and he out there doing this thing, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. Salute to Gibbs. Oh, yeah, salute to, to Gibbs, man. He out there doing his thing, he out there acting and everything, you know, and, and that's cool because that's what that's that's what you're trying to do. You're trying mm -hmm. to make it to do other things, you know what I'm saying? Once you use your talents for one thing, it'll multiply into other things, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So big, big ups to him, but, like, like, it's more as it's more facets to the game too, you know. Like everybody want to be a rapper, right. and everybody want to, you know, say I want to grab the mic, and they want to be the first ones to blow up in the G. But there's a lot of aspects to the game. Like, dude, you know, say your rap time might be over with. How right. about uh, training up some of these younger cats and be a manager? Like I told one of my partners, I say instead mm -hmm. of trying to be Biggie, be Puffy. Right, now, exactly. Not the puffy, not the puffy. That's the puffy right now. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> puffy, puffy had a rough year. <laughs> right, right. It's, like, it's a rough time to be puffy right about that now. <laughs> but, but I, but uh, I know, I know what you're saying though. As far as it's like, like I said, 
When I say a strength in numbers, that means the strength in numbers. We can have a successful entertainment uh, or, or label or, or some kind of home base in Gary alone. In Gary. Yeah, we can. We can. And so many people that, but we, like I said, everybody wants to be the one. I'm, I'm doing this. Look at me. Look at me. I mean, I've been doing music all my life, man, and I've, 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 I've been out there, but I ain't never been like a look at me cat. I'm, I'm just all about, man. Look, I'm all about the art. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and I'm not even about the, the fortune and fame, because I don't the, the fame. Be careful what you wish for, man, because yeah. fame is, is, is crazy. It's a, you, you, you don't live a normal life no more. So I'm gonna take advantage of this normality that I'm living right now. You know what I'm saying? Because once that fame hits, then your life is no longer your own life. It's no, it's no longer private. Yeah, you're right, man. And you know, like I'm gonna put it like this, and not to say that you know I'm famous or you know what I'm saying this and that, but I've been doing a few things, right? Like mm -hmm. on Facebook and things like that. And uh, it's funny, man, that sometimes now that I go out, somebody will see me be like, "Oh man, I see you on that bed." Oh, oh, uh. That one episode, man, he said, oh, man, I love that. Keep doing it. So you don't know who watching you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Once you put it out there to the masses, you don't know who watching you. And so now you have to start being careful. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> like you just said, it ain't the same no more. Like, I, I got to move differently because, like, I might have said something that might have offended somebody. You yep. feel what I'm saying? And not knowing who I have and offended, and they see it. Now they see me in person. It can jump off to something, you know. So it's a it's a different ram. It's a different. I mean, so I didn't. I don't want the fame either. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not doing this for money. But whatever comes with it comes with. It. You feel what I'm saying? But Absolutely. as far as the money, as far as the money, as far as the success, man, you know, it is what it is. I've been I've been broke my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it ain't nothing to get used to. <laughs> So that ain't the motivating, that ain't the motivating factor in this. You know what I'm saying? It's just that, like you say, I want to see other people grow. And if somebody come on my show and and say like uh P came on my show and he 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 uh put he promoted his documentary, you know, he promoted the new LP that he fit to put out that go to the documentary. And if P come out and he go out and make five mil, I ain't hating on P. I'm getting with P like, hey, bro, uh, <clears throat> show me some stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Show me, show me some things. Uh, help me work on this project that I'm working on. You know, you you always gotta surround yourself with people that's smarter than you. You have to, man, and you have to you have to surround yourself with people like minded people. Exactly, people that just don't settle for uh, just the, just the normal everyday. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's people that create. It's it's creators out here. It's artists mm -hmm. out here. It's creators. It's movers and shakers out here, man. So you surround yourself with a with a, with a core group of people that's like minded and 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 got and goal oriented like you are, man. Sky's the limit, bro. So I'm trying to collaborate, man. I'm reaching out. So I'm glad you got. I'm, I got a platform, man. I'm reaching out to all actors, all um, musicians, rappers, singers, whatever, man. I'm trying to create music, and I'm just trying to to share my talent. With others and collaborate, man. And let's let's blow this thing up. We well overdue. I feel you, and um, I'm glad that you said that. And you know, off the air, we're gonna chop it up a little a little bit more about some things. You know what I'm saying? Because me, my cousin, another little homie I got, we working on some stuff too that's fitting exactly what you're saying. You know? Okay. So, okay. You know, we all get together, and and like I tell them, man, like I was telling them, you know. I want to get to the point, like, you know, set it. Remember the movie Set It Off? Where mm -hmm. Before they went to rob the bank and they were just sitting around that big round table, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's what I want to do. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, just us. Well, we sitting around the round table making moves, making uh, making decisions, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. bring them in for the money. Yeah. Yeah. So, like you say, man, it's a lot of, it's a lot of talent. It's a lot of creators. It's a lot of people that's doing different things. I mean, movies. Uh, films, documentaries, th everything, man. So if we all get together, put our mind to it, like you said, you got to be with like-minded people, though. Mm -hmm. That's not afraid to spend money, neither, because that's one of the issues that I've had with people. We can get together, 
come right. up with an idea, come right. up with a plan. But then as soon as the, the money part get, you get crickets, you know what I'm saying? People no, you start gotta, falling off. You so, got you gotta be willing to invest in yourself. If that's why like minded people are all gonna see the see some people can't see the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't see the big picture, they just see the right now. But you gotta get like minded people that see the big picture and be like, okay, I'm willing to invest in myself in what I believe in this project. Mm -hmm. I'm humble right now, man. So I'm I'm humbly coming to, to, to people and saying, Look, man, look, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I don't know it all. I'm not the most talented cat in the world, but I do know art. I do have creativity and I am willing to collaborate, man. And like I said, we can make something big. Yeah, you know, I'm all for that, man. Like I say, uh, off air, we're going to get a chance. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk because I got some things that's in the works. A couple projects. Like I said, I'm sure. working with my cousin. Uh, the, he a producer. You know what I'm saying? Making some fire beats and everything like that. We was talking about doing a documentary out there in the hood. So mm -hmm. definitely going to get together and uh, chop it up on some things. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, you know, like coming from the G, man, coming from Gary, like like you were saying, like coming from Gary, we have challenges. You know what I'm saying? Because like in the era where you was talking about uh, 89, through that era right there, we was considered the Myrtle Capital, you know. That's when it was, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and but it was by by Capital, you know, how they how they go because our right. city it would it our city wasn't as big as Chicago or Los Angeles or nothing like that. But like we came through that era, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we both graduated what 92. Yeah. And, and so we came through that era where you had to you had to watch yourself because people was people was dying every day, bro. Bro, I, that's that's I'm a, I, I touch on that on the documentary a lot as far as that era. I say that era was the most dangerous era for young black males because it was the the heart of the crack era, the heart of it, mm -hmm. and it was the heart of the gang banging area uh, of the era, bro. So at that point in time, man. If you were a young black male between the ages of 13 and 19, you didn't have a lot of choices. Depending on where you stayed, you didn't have no choice. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was even on us too, uh, the way that you moved around the city. I mean, yeah. back, back at that time, that's when Gleason was jumping off. You know, G Gleason was jumping off big time like Crenshaw. Yeah. And, and not only that, that's, you know, we had the clubs, we had in effect, we had, you know, uh that's what in effect was jumping off for, for our age down yeah there, tri -city. yeah and so it ain't that that we didn't move around it ain't that you know what I'm saying we we shied away from certain things it was just that by the grace of god I, I i will say that by the grace of god that we still sitting here today to be able to tell our story because there's so many others that that's not here that did the same things that we did but mm -hmm. that's not here to tell their stories though Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's nothing but the grace of God right there, bro. All, all praise is due to God, man, for that. So I, I tell my children that. I tell my grandchildren that. Like, hey, I I beat the odds. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm, I'm meant to be here. I got a purpose on this earth for some 